One batch of texts in the group chat reads from Brittany, I'd be willing to do the pills for sure. She knows how to get them in Houston. Jackie, yes. Brittany, what do I need to do that? Jackie, are you sure? We can talk about it when you're back. Brittany, yeah, let's talk about it. But I read over that option too. I just thought you had to actually go to the state to get it. I read that it's similar to a miscarriage and can be done more at home generally. Jackie, yeah. Brittany, if I don't have to travel, that would make things so much easier. Amy, dude, yeah. What was just part of a conversation among a group of Texas women is now being used as evidence in a first-of-its-kind lawsuit in Texas since the passage of the state's near-total abortion ban and the overturning of Roe. The lawsuit is being brought by a man who alleges that three women helped his ex-wife get access to medication abortion. His lawsuit claims that under Texas law, a person who assists a pregnant woman in obtaining a self-managed abortion has committed the crime of murder and can be sued for wrongful death. Joining me now to discuss all this is Tali Farhadian Weinstein, former federal and state prosecutor in New York. Tali, thank you for being here to help me understand how in the world this can actually be happening. What do you, okay, legally speaking, what are the merits, if you will, of this case? Right. So I think that this case was inevitable. I think it's where the anti-choice movement has wanted to go in court for a long time, which is to actually go past any statutes that specifically prohibit abortion or make people liable for helping somebody get an abortion and just say, murder is murder and a fetus is a person. And so it invokes, interestingly, just the murder statute in Texas yeah. and wrongful death in Texas. And the language of it is baby Silva was murdered and someone has to be held to account. For doing that. that this is um, the movement towards fetal personhood is something you hear about in state legislatures among far right conservative members with increasing frequency. Could this be could the end game of that this case really be that to establish fetal personhood and then get it worked through the court system for national policy? Well, I think it's a long game, and part of it is laying the conceptual groundwork. And remember that his lawyer, one of his lawyers, is the person who wrote SB 8, the Texas law that introduced this idea that the people who help with the abortion are also on the hook for something. And we'll see how far he can get here, but I think it's not just about this suit, because one of the things that jumped out at me is how much of the language of prosecution was in here, and what they might be trying to do is to go at prosecutors into bringing this case, right? I mean, who is really supposed to be right. holding people to account for murder? For murder? Right, <laughs> exactly. right. You're saying we, the husband is suing, but hey, hey, DA, shouldn't you in Texas be taking this case of murder up because baby Silva was murdered? Never mind that baby Silva was a fertilized embryo exactly. a few weeks old. And if not this DA, then the next DA in Texas, then the next DA in Texas or the DA in some other state. So I, I think that that's sort of the master plan. Wow. In the meantime, you know, you read those text message chains. This is a group of women who see their friend. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're, first of all, the, the sense that they are offering her support in a time of crisis is so abundantly clear. I'll read another excerpt from it. Um, Amy says, mistakes happen. You can't spiral. Hopefully this is a slap in the body that you need to remove yourself from him. Yeah, it is for sure. Can't risk something like that generally, especially with him. I just worry about your emotional state and he'll be able to snake his way into your head. Then another one says, delete all conversations from today. You don't want him looking through it. Brittany, got it. We'll do for sure. There's another friend says, and get rid of the test and wrapper, not at home. First of all, the environment in which this woman is fe feeling the clear pressure to carry through with this pregnancy, despite what is clearly not a good situation for her at home, I think leaves anybody who's reading that in distress, right? She's trying to not have this pregnancy follow, she's not, she's not trying to carry this pregnancy through to term because she wants to get away from this man. Uh, number one, the fact that he has access to these text messages um, and that these women now are being charged with, uh, they're being sued for wrongful death. The echo effects of that are profound. Indeed. And Alex, there are so many red flags here. I mean, we were just learning about the Silva family, but even just looking at what you read, I'm reminded of when SB8 first went into effect. So many advocates who work on domestic violence were worried that this could be another instrument of what we call power and control over the person in your house that you're abusing. Because you could say, you know, if you try to get an abortion, 
I'm going to sue yes. your sister and your mom and your friend and whoever is in your circle of support. So the whole tone of it raises that. And then, you know, one of the when I was a prosecutor, one of the things that we would look for in domestic violence cases is when they take your phone. Right. So I, we don't know. Maybe we'll learn that he got these messages some other way. But I do worry that he was tracking her phone, that he was taking her phone out of her hands, which is, of course, her way of connecting with the outside world. Uh, so uh, I. She talks I, about I, not wanting to leave the state. She can't have the pregnancy test. She's talking about basically just trying to p keep a, as low pro a profile as she possibly can around this. Um, you know, and her friends clearly think he's a bad actor in her life. Indeed. And. And we know that now they're actually divorced. So this was a relationship that ultimately did fall apart. And we're seeing some of the history of that here and how it intersects with abortion regulation in a really terrifying way. Oh, and just in terms, you talk about autonomy here. It's not just bodily autonomy. It's emotional autonomy. It's economic, financial autonomy. The things that are being infringed upon in Texas, when you when it, you talk about women in the under the auspices of pregnancy, it is the handmaid's tale. Yeah, it, it's amazing. It's she's talking about taking a day off of work, and, you know, in order to manage this abortion. It really kind of gives you a window into what the abortion pill, as opposed to a surgical abortion, really means in the lives of women who are in dire straits. Such an important right. point as we await a cataclysmic uh, decision in that case, down with Judge Kazmarek in Amarillo. Tally Farhadi and Weinstein, it is, I'm sorry that it is a joy to talk to you uh, about really distressing things. Uh, thank you for your time and wisdom as always. Mm -hmm.